thanks for joining me. And in this video, we're going to talk about five things that you might have overlooked in Google Classroom that just may make your life a little bit easier. Number one, the first thing we're going to look at is communicating with parents and students in Google Classroom. If you go to the people page on any Google Classroom, you'll notice that you can see a list of your students. Next to each student, you'll see a checkbox. But at the top of that column, you'll also see another checkbox that lets you check all students. If you click that, then you can choose actions and choose email. So this allows you to quickly shoot an email out to all the students in your class without having to go to Google Groups and create a group email or without having to create a contact group in Gmail. And so we've got a one-stop shop here to send a message out to let our students know about due dates or an upcoming project that they need to be thinking about. If you look in people, you'll notice that next to each student, there is an invite guardians option. If you click invite guardians, it lets you type in the email address of the parent of the student. And then click invite. When you choose this option, they'll receive an invitation by email to get weekly email summaries about how students are keeping up in class. Let's take a look at that parent email to see what they've received from me. So I'm logged in as this parent and you'll see they've just received an email that says get Google Classroom email summaries. If we click on that, then it shows that they'll get a weekly summary of progress and if we clicked accept, then it takes us back to the Google Classroom where they can accept those weekly summaries. Once that's done, it shows them how frequently they can receive those. They can choose weekly or daily. And if at any time they choose not to receive them, then there will be an option at the bottom of each email stating that they have the option to opt out. If I go back to my classroom and I'd like to see an example of what parents receive, you can always go up to the gear at the top of your class and in the general section, there's an example link that you can choose for guardian summaries. This shows you what the parent would see as well as at the bottom of every email, the option to unsubscribe. And again, because I have parents that have subscribed to receive weekly or daily emails, now I have an option that says email all guardians. And if I click that, then I can quickly shoot a message out to parents if I need to. The third tip we're going to share has to do with student grades in Google Classroom. Now, if you remember from a previous video, there is a new grades feature in Google Classroom that's available to teachers. And you can change the settings for that up in the gear if you scroll to the bottom where it says gradebook. Now, currently I have total points set up and I've set it so that the overall grade can be seen by students. For students to see that, let me show you what a student login looks like. So here, I'm logged in as a student and if I go to classwork and look at one of the assignments that was turned in by this student then they can see their grade right here but if they'd like to see more then all they have to do is jump back out here and under the classwork section there's an option at the top that says view your work if you click view your work then the student can see their overall average here as well as each assignment when it is due, if there were due dates, and the grade they received once it's been turned in. Additionally, they'll also see a list of assignments that have been assigned, returned, or that are missing, which is something that parents will also see in the weekly or daily email summaries. For tip number four, we're going to take a look at student comments. Now, currently you're looking at a view of a student that is logged into one of my courses, and you can see that there's an option here that says share something with your class. Additionally, if we look at the classwork and we view an assignment, a student has an option to add a private comment. So sometimes this can be great if students want to ask questions about an assignment or if they want to provide feedback to a teacher about a grade they received. But sometimes this can backfire on you because students don't always follow rules and sometimes they say things they shouldn't say. If you want to turn this feature off, or at least limit what students can do with comments, all you have to do is again, go to your course at the top, click on the gear, and under the general section, you have an option on stream 
where you can choose to change those settings. Here we have students can post and comment, which means that they can post in the stream so that everyone can see it or they can comment on assignments. There's also students can only comment, meaning that they will no longer have the ability to post to the stream, but they can only comment on assignments that you give. So if I go back to my student login here, you'll see that this is the option where they can post, and if I refresh the screen, that option has now gone away and the student can no longer post. They still have the option of leaving comments on assignments. The third option is to make it so that only teachers can post or comment. If you choose this option, students will no longer be able to take part in assignments such as the question. So if you want students to be able to respond to open-ended questions for discussion, then you'll want to leave the option open for commenting. Typically, I will leave most classes set up so that students can only comment and it opens them up to leaving comments or questions about assignments and then taking part in questions. And then finally for tip number five, something that works really well for a lot of teachers is the ability to copy a course. Now at the end of the year, teachers will want to archive a course and keep that information so that they can look back and see how students have performed in the past if a question ever arises, but they don't want to recreate the entire course or reuse questions over and over again. Sometimes they, they want to use the exact course as it was laid out previously. And you have that option from your dashboard if you click on the more menu or the three dots on any course. By clicking on those three dots, you can click copy. And then you have the option of renaming this copied class. And you'll notice that when you copy the class, you get topics and classwork items but your rosters of old students and announcements won't be copied. So it's a perfect layout and template of a previous course, and it's all ready to go for next year. And if I show you this, if I click copy, it may take a couple of seconds, but what I want you to see is the way it is laid out in this new copied course. Now that our course has been copied, you'll notice up here it says copy of five things. And if I click on that course and go to the classwork menu, You'll notice that all of the assignments that I previously assigned in that course are now draft copies, so they're not already out there and visible by the students. And when I'm ready, I can click on the More button, edit those assignments, and add any additional or updated information I need to, and then assign or schedule to assign those when I'm ready. Well, hopefully these five tips have helped you out. Um, and if you have questions about these or other items in Google Classroom, please check out my blog at www.techiecoach.com. Thanks for joining me.